Hello, all you worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Here with another episode of Ask Dave. And we've been answering questions lately, and the question, and this is Ask Dave after all, is from Michael Sens, who does not yet have his license. He says, Hi Dave, I hope to have a call sign soon. I am looking I am taking the technician and general exam within the next five days. Well, good luck to you. And this was written on July 27th, so maybe you've done that already. If I pass, hopefully, I would like to your advice for a ham uh, newbie. I have a uh, limited amount of money. Should I get a, a mobile power supply and hotspot as a base station? or an HT, say handheld, sometimes called a handy talkie, uh, with a hotspot. Um, I am within five to seven miles from where there is a DMR repeater, FM repeater, and an FM Echolink repeater. Am I correct the time, let's see, am I correct the time allowed on a repeater is limited? No, not necessarily. Um, I'm getting thoroughly confused. Thank you in advance for your help and guidance. Mike from Ohio. Well, Mike, let's see if we can answer your questions here a little bit and uh, get uh, something uh, going on here for you. Uh, first of all, everything that you're talking about doing here uh, with DMR, uh, FM, so on, uh, applies to uh, the class of license that you'll be getting. So this is something to look forward to. I uh, commend you for holding off purchasing anything until you've actually got your license in hand, because uh, that's how you will know. Um, uh, then you'll know it's okay, it's safe to do that. I have seen a lot of really well-intentioned people uh, go ahead and get their licenses and try to get on the air and find for whatever reason, who knows what reason, they can't do it, they can't get their license. I mean, it can be anything from getting married, having a baby, um, you know, working a different job, moving, all different kinds of things, uh, known as real life, can intervene and uh, make you postpone that uh, item of getting your amateur radio license. Don't purchase or buy or any equipment until you have your, your ticket in hand. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of the questions here. Um, I have limited amount of money. That describes an awful lot of hands, so don't feel bad about that. <clears throat> that probably means you're going to buy a Chinese radio. Um, it may not, but it probably does. Um, now, you're looking at a couple of things. You seem to be uh, settled on uh, DMR. There is DMR, which is put out by the Chinese manufacturers and the Japanese Alinko. There is Yesu System Fusion, which is Yesu. And you have um, the Kenwood and um, ICOM, I'll think of it in a minute. D star. Then there is D star. Um, which is used by Kenwood and um, ICOM. Now Kenwood started out with its own thing but went over to D-Star which is actually put out by the J Japanese Amateur Radio League. Um, 
so this is an open standard. Uh, Yesu has made its standards open, but nobody else has taken advantage of them. And DMR is actually a public service standard um, if you're PN. And uh, the Chinese have picked up on it. I mean, the obvious one to have picked would have been DSTAR, because this is kind of the public one. But the Chinese won't do anything that the uh, Japanese lead. It, it's, just, it's not going to happen. Memories of World War II are that fresh. And um, as you may know, Japan invaded China. And they are not yet friends to this day. I think they recognize each other's country, but uh, the Chinese are not going to do something the Japanese do. And the Japanese have got their own patriotic feelings and are not generally going to do what the Chinese do, with the exception of Linko over here. It would be very nice if everybody would get together so at least the repeaters could act as translators. And these are not grossly different from one another. I mean, just handling bits and so on. And bits can be twiddled and you can do all kinds of things like that. Um, which one is most popular? Well, Just simply because of the sheer number of Chinese radios, DMR has taken a pretty commanding lead, but it's highly specific to different areas. In your area of the country, your city with your repeaters and your amateur radio clubs, they could by and large tend to be DMR or they could by and large be System Fusion or D-Star. Uh, so there's generally one favorite in an area. And what you want to do is club shop and go around to the clubs that you know, maybe the club that is uh, uh, hosting your VE session, uh, which I guess has already happened according to the dates here. Um, and, you know, find out what people around you do, what they use and so on. And that will be what you want to do. And you can get equipment for all of these. All of these systems work and they all work well. DMR is often poo-pooed because it is a public service uh, type of system and so therefore there are parts of it that are uh, too complicated really for amateur radio. But uh, there are standard ways like we always usually set the color code to one. You know, things like that that uh, uh, kind of simplify the setup. Uh, system Fusion works very well a very high audio quality. D-Star works pretty well too. Kenwood and ICOM both use it. There are um, machines that are, I guess what you would call gateways, that allow you to like go in on D-Star and come out on System Fusion. Uh, some of the hotspots, now let me show you a hotspot. This is a hotspot right here. This hotspot um, was put together in San Diego by a company called NextGen, N-E-X hyphen G-E-N. It's beautifully done, beautifully machined. Everything is very nice. It's a uh, Raspberry Pi with a hat on it. And what this does is it's connected to the uh, internet somewhere here, here, you connect it to the internet and what happens is you can use any of these plus a few other minor little ones, you can use any of these to go out to uh, what are called rooms or conversation areas or something like that uh, so that uh, it's like a party line and you can join the party line and discuss things. And uh, you need a radio to get into one of these. Um, I don't know why I haven't seen them with a, a simple 
mic plug on here for that. Um, and forget the radio part and just go straight to the internet, but they don't do that. I guess what they're thinking is, uh, since this is, you need amateur radio license to use this, that in fact, you'll be better off if you have to use a handy talkie with a tenth of a watt or, or less. Okay, now he's, his two options are the following. Uh, for his base station, get a mobile radio and uh, use that um, and have a hotspot. Uh, or get a handheld and use that with a hotspot. Well, I think I would say um, you can forget the hotspot for right now. I mean, um, if you put up an outdoor antenna like a J-pole or something like that, or just a 19-inch whip. Oh, by the way, most DMR is on uh, 70 centimeters. Uh, not all of it. But uh, you can build antennas for that very, very simply. And you can actually contact these out over the air. Now, how long you can use a repeater is very repeater specific. If it is a very busy repeater, the repeater managers would like you to keep your calls short. Generally, along the lines of calling somebody and then moving off to a different repeater or different simplex frequency or something like that. If the repeater is not used a bunch, if it spends most of the day silent, having a 10 or 15 minute conversation is not a problem. Leave lots of space between um, the time the other person talks and the time you start to transmit so that somebody can jump in if they've got something important to say. Okay, I would recommend that for your home station, you do the mobile radio with power supply. Uh, the, the reference station power supply is listed at uh, dkassler.com slash reference. And it's the Samlex SEC1235M, and that will be big enough to power your general class station when you get your general ticket too. I can pardon both because you're not using both at once. And uh, you'll have a lot of fun with it. It looks like you've worked hard at understanding how all this works. And because of that, that knowledge is going to help you really have fun with what's going on and do so very quickly. So I commend you for that. Um, and am I correct the time allowed on a repeater? It depends. You know, if there's an emergency going on, don't use the repeater at all. Leave it to those dealing with the emergency. Um, if somebody's got a long conversation going on, you can break in simply by dropping your call sign uh, during a break. Hopefully, everybody who's using it leaves a break so that other people can get in. Um, and if you're on, make sure you leave a break uh, so that other people can get in. Um, now, DMR, D-Star, and System Fusion, usually with the hotspot, if you have a radio that does one of those, you can actually use the hotspot as a translator and get into the network on any of the three. So that's a nice little thing to deal with. Now, if you've got a handy talkie and you're talking on the hotspot, you only need a tenth of a watt or something. Very, very little power. Um, this was one other thing I wanted to say, and I can't remember what it is. Oh, well. Well, there you have it. I hope that helps and gives you some of the information you're looking for. I have something I'd like to show you on uh, uh, here. I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. My study here is filled, and I mean filled, with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel. And it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams in the USA. 
the items to be given away this time. The item to be given away this time is a book entitled Novel Antennas from the Radio Society of Great Britain. I think I picked it up at Dayton. Here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or a simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case number one, your name and call sign, and shipping address. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else, though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I may be able to show those during the live stream. Um, by the way, by shipping address, I mean USPS shipping address. Now, electronic submissions will not be accepted. It's got to be a piece of paper. The drawing will take place during the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on August 26th. Note that I pay the book postage, so it's all totally free for you. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like and don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.